Hey guys, Daddy C with Chainbreakers Garden. Uh, today we're doing a little bit of gardening maintenance. More specifically, we are staking our tomatoes. Um, yesterday the rain came through, and uh, it, it first of all it was 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, and then um, you know, and then and you know, and then the rain came through. And so at first when I saw it come down, and I was looking outside, I was like, oh great, I don't have to water tomorrow. That's fantastic. <laughs> And this, then I started coming down a little bit more. It's like, oh man, it's kind of late in the evening. Hope it doesn't cause any mildew issues. Then I saw the chickens scatter. I saw, I looked down from the, from my from, from my kitchen window, and I saw the chickens just start hauling tail. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I saw the dog scatter and run to his house. I was like, okay. And then the rain started tumbling and coming in sideways, and that's when I knew we were doomed. So our tomatoes, we had begun the process of pruning them but I hadn't begun the process of staking them, right? So I came out here once the rain, me and my daughter came out here once the rain had stopped a little bit and we came out and done some emergency holding up. Needed to hold my mule a little bit. So we grabbed some zip ties and some, um, zip ties and some stakes and, and pulled them back up and got them in shape a little bit. I started pruning the other side. We're gonna prune that one right there. I started pruning the other side just the day prior and they didn't fall. Right, so these up here that I had pruned already when the rain came through yesterday didn't fall. They were perfect, they were fine. The ones that weren't pruned, they toppled. And remember your tomatoes have the reason you may see that large stake there, I don't I don't uh, imagine that they would get that tall. Um we're good but we're not that good. Um and I'm gonna have to pack it with some dirt to get it right where I want it. Probably cut the top right here and probably tap it into the ground a little bit more. Um, but remember, type, tomatoes come in two types determinate versus indeterminate. Indeterminate is to the moon, right? So it's the, there's no determined height, no determined amount of fruit that they're going to bear. Uh, if you're in the cryptocurrency, we're going to the moon. Milk coins, take me to the moon. Hummingbird coins, take me to the moon. Sheba coins, take me to the moon. I'm just, you know, hey, we need some money around here, yo. <laughs> but, um, so they, they don't have a determined amount of height or bearing of fruit. Determined types are going to have a set, probably going to grow at an average height, and they're going to they're gonna bear you fruit one good time, and that's going to do it for them. Now, the majority of the types uh, out commercially are indeterminate. Um, I don't think there's none. There are four types out here. Cherokee, Cherokee, pineapple, um, cherry, assorted color cherry, whatever that means, and um, I think a beef tomato, if I'm not mistaken. You got a lot of plants out here, man. Um, but the, the majority of all of them are indeterminate. So we're going to stake them kind of high. You don't have to be necessarily this high. And then we, and we're staking them, in the, and we're using... Don't use the zip ties, right? I've used zip ties before. It, it did, they did perfectly fine, but more preferably use this this tape here because this this is a Velcro tape, a Velcro brand, in fact, um, and it allows you to adjust as the season goes about. And you know, and once you pull a zip tie in tight, that's it. There's no more adjusting. So they're easy, and quick to use in a bind, but you want to be sure to you want to allow your tomato as it grows. They have some wiggle room, you know. Um, and the pruning is essential because too many leaves, of course, lead to a lot of uh, root rot. No, not root rot, but leaf rot. And uh, that's caused mold issues. I pruned one earlier. I'll find one and show you guys. Um, but if you ever have like yellowing and stuff on your leaves, that's from, you know, probably you water it probably at the wrong time of the day. So like this, what we considered, I was smelling myself a little bit too much. And I think I watered, one day I probably watered around this time. And so now the sun's setting, beautiful as it may be, and more convenient for me. But um, in doing that, you allow, I allowed water to sit on the leaves overnight, which was not good. So you want to be careful of that, be mindful of that with your which are watering anything, cucumbers, watermelons, eggplants, um, squashes, and zucchinis, uh, they all 
do not care for that at all. They don't. They do not like to have water issues like that. Um, I've already pruned off the majority of our issues here with these. This one it concerns me though. I feel like it's being neglected. But everything else looks fine. Um, we've got, I believe we've got squash somewhere in there. Not on this one. This one's got some buds. Let's get some little squashes. Yeah, there you go. There's crook next to you know what you guys can see. We got some crook neck squash action going on down there. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there that show you how to pollinate your squash. Um, I've never done it. I've always just depended on, I've always depended on Mother Nature to, hey, get me, get me to the finish line. Um, oh no, I stepped on a, oh no, don't be rebounds. Stepped on a, oh no, I stepped on several. <laughs> That's like, it's so terrible. Just the one pepper I wanted to see actually do somebody. <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing today. And you just want to be mindful of your watering, mindful of when you need to go ahead and prune your tomatoes. Um, like unnecessary, unnecessary stuff, you know? I just want a nice, clean-looking tomato. I just want a nice, clean-looking plant, man. Nice, very good stem. I want to see it. it. Needs to look like a. Wish I, how I wish my crepe myrtle looked. Nice, you know what I'm saying? I want to be nice and trim, or tomatoes have a, a tendency to get big on you, and then they become unbearable. Un unbearable. It's hard to explain it. But um. But even for like our eggplants, like these little uh, eggplants here, we got to get rid of this. This grass here, man, that's a that's an ish an issue that we're dealing with. For our little eggplants. Um, and our foreign nasturtium as well. <clears throat> And the sturgeon is doing pretty well for it to be sitting out in the middle of sun like this. So I'm not sure if we'll ever get a flower, but um, I think it's doing pretty well considering where it is. Um, first of all, you know we come, we're walking by Brother Fee. Say hello to Brother Fee. Say hello to Sister Agastash, who was just hanging out at the garden. I liked it because it looked pretty. <laughs> and my daughter's like, ooh. And so if you ever go with me and my daughter, and she says ooh to something, I normally buy it. And um, that's Sister Agastash. Sister Laverne, the new Fuya fig that I just bought. Um, not Fuya fig, but Fuya persimmon. So hopefully we get her uh, get her potted up and looking looking pretty decent here. Uh, not a lot of action going on, on this side. Watermelons. We did make a slight miscalculation with our with our okra. I didn't anticipate the corn growing so vigorously and the okra fall, so lagging far behind. So they have kind of been bombarded by all this corn. Um, and uh, so these are doing okay, but I guess, they, I guess they're both growing at probably at the same height and length. But I just planted some more on this side here. So this should take place of those. Um, something is, well, when the rest of this stuff comes up, I'll let you know, but there's a bunch of stuff. Cantaloupe, another type of tomato down there. Um, buckwheat and um, buckwheat toasted basil um, Crenshaw melons I've never grown them so I don't know how it's going to taste and pumpkins I think that's it <laughs> um, we had uh, discussed uh, I talked about our inability to grow lettuce we had a very nice salad the other day with the lettuce that we do have, and it was uh, pretty good. The lettuce just melted. It was crispy, and then it melted. It was beautiful. It was fantastic. And uh, the day I was like, so I hadn't really paid any much attention to this side. I just sort of letting it do its own thing. I've got some more lettuces indoors that I, um, I want to then transplant out here. We'll try it again. 
Um, and especially now, with it being 90, 94, 95 degrees, your lettuce is probably not gonna germinate in 95, 90 degrees outside in the soil. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna. So if you can find a way to grow it indoors, maybe put it in a pot. Um, shout out to SC Country Girl. Uh, follow her channel. Um, she, uh, she, she um, moves her, uh, her to, um, she moves her, I believe, lettuces around in her container. So shout out to her. Follow her, man. Um, that's been my people. See, I mean, I'm from the Carolinas, so I got to represent SC Country Girl. She's got a YouTube channel. Check her out. Um, oh, man, look at that board over. You see that? Y'all see that board right there? I don't know if you can see it, but look how giant it is. Um, but our lettuces, um, I saw today. I'll take that. I'll take that, yo. <laughs> yo. Yo, I'll take that. Yo. That was a couple salads, yo. <laughs> so our method, we, we, I'm, I'm fine-tuning this thing. I told my wife, if I can get lettuce to grow year-round, things going to change. We're going to move some furniture, all right? Because I, I have some friends that have restaurants. And maybe they may want to put you spoil. Maybe they want some lettuce from us, yo. <laughs> no, I, I really don't. But I do have friends that have restaurants. But, <laughs> um, but I, if we could get lettuce to grow year round, and if we could get it to do that on a consistent basis, um, let me see if you guys can see. I, I gotta let y'all see it. <laughs> Doggone it! Look at it. <laughs> if we can get that to happen year round. I think the sky's the limit for us. So the method that I'm doing now is we're gonna to try to transplant it again. We're gonna substitute out this fabric here, this Agrabon fabric for a mesh. And I gotta find enough mesh to do that. Um, but if I can get it to grow year round and I can expand it to where, it, like Cedar Simpson looks to be doing really well. Um, so I'm extremely, it's not doing really well because uh, clearly I've abandoned this part of the, this part of the patch. <laughs> But it's doing well enough to, for me to have some faith in it that growing it going forward and the taste that, it, it, that I got from it was fantastic. So I'm feeling confident. I'm, I'm feeling a lot better now. So that was definitely a boost in the arm when I walked over here earlier today. We're trying some other things on this side too to, to combat the grass. And um, so hopefully that works out. Over here we've got Portuguese kale and I'm trying to grow it in cups in the ground to combat with the grass so I don't have to constantly pull up grass. And Portuguese kale is just basically a, a summertime collard. And so I decided that we'll plant it in the cups. That way I, will, I can take my eye off this section for a little bit and let it do its thing here. Um, I poked holes in the bottom of the cup and on the sides of the cup when the water, when it rains and everything like that, then hopefully that will do cause the cup bottom to fall out if not the cup hope hopefully the um, Portuguese kale will form a nice a consistent root system in, within the cup and then I can just pull it out and pop it in the ground but since I need to take my eyes off this section right now I decided to do that um, if it works is it stupid I don't know is it is it silly I'm not sure I know normally you could do that with peat pots if you have them but I didn't see ain't enough peat pots in the world to fill all these spots so I didn't feel like following that but that's good news about that lettuce. Um, and that board over there is really nice because I've been having a difficult, difficult time growing boards and it's not that difficult. But for whatever reason, hey, there's, some, there's some blue curl kale hanging out down here by itself. That's on the far end. The far end of the garden. Um, and uh, man, we got a lot of grass, y'all. Tried no till on some of these sides and man, it's gonna take another good season for us to get this right, you know. Another good season just for us to really fine tune that thing. But this is boorish, and it's coming out like gangbusters. This is a monster. Yeah. This one here, it's a monster. It's a beast of a plant, and um, of course, this is the same as a, a couple of the other plants we have growing out there. We're trying to grow amaranth from seed and this one is no different and just like toasted basil that we're trying to grow from seed um, they're pretty much you just scatter them on top of the grass you maybe press them into the soil a little bit and that gets you your growth uh, they're triggered by the sunlight so 
We are pretty successful with Tulsi basil over there. It seems to be growing really well. I was able to grow it indoors, but we had some incidents with chickens and slugs and stuff. So, yeah. That's the, that's the cost of doing this stuff. Um, but that's it for today, guys. Uh, like, if... This may seem like a lot of maintenance, but it's really not. It's more of, you know, procrastination, right? If you work on one side and you let another side go, that's really not the garden's fault. That's your fault. As, you know, that's my fault. Like, these assertions over here that need to be tended to, you know? <clears throat> they run pretty well, by the way, too. So, um... You know, you gotta have that Phil Jackson approach, man, to, to doing this stuff. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. You have that Phil Jackson approach and just be hands off. Scotty! Kobe! Just run the triangle! <coughs> Excuse me. Corn! Run the triangle! Oh, Corn, you gotta do better! That's more like, that's more like Doc Rivers, isn't it? So it's like Doc Rivers. Oh, Paul! Kawhi, you you lost me my job. Oh, quit! You're making me look bad. You gotta, you gotta do better. <laughs> no, I'm just playing, man. Shout out to Clippers fans, though. You know, I, I am a Lakers fan, so you can get in my comment section if you want to. But I mean, it ain't gonna do you no good because yeah. No. Nevertheless, um, <laughs> um, Lakers for life. That's it for today, guys. So um, hopefully. You guys learn from our mistakes. Stake your tomatoes early. If you don't do anything on the planet, stake your tomatoes early. Trim them early. Stay on top of the tomatoes, man, because they're going to take off on you. They're going to get away from you really, really quickly. And uh, Mother Nature could catch you flat-footed, so don't be like us. Um, that's it for today, guys. I pray the atmosphere that you're moving, that you're building, and that you're growing in is of nothing but God. I pray you and your family remain covered. Amen. Like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I've been, getting, been forgetting to say that, but I hope you have. We're almost at 200 subscribers. For that, I'm extremely appreciative and extremely thankful for it. I hope we can do a shout-out video. And um, I'm trying to get a list of some of us that aren't quite as well-known as others and um, comprise a list of us and uh, be seeing people drive by, man. They'll be trying to stop and check the garden out. I ain't really, I don't really like people driving by like that. <laughs> really, really but, yeah, hopefully we'll get a video out, man. This video's going really long, so I'm really sorry about that. I just see that. Um... Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna get to 200 subscribers hopefully and then hopefully we'll do a shout-out video of, of some of our my comrades that are like us not quite as uh, We're we're small. We're, we were starting and uh, startling uh, startings uh, uh, Seedlings in a big forest, right? So we were saplings in a big forest and we've yet to test the canopy uh, But we're just trying to make a name for ourselves. So hopefully I can get a video of that uh, with just specific shout outs for, to, to those good people, but until we do, um, I thank you guys so much. We don't do this. Uh, I just appreciate you. That's it, guys. We'll get it again some other time. Thanks.